Hi, in this video, I will download and install the Integrated Development Environment Tool, or ID, for 32-bit microcontrollers on Windows from the Artery Technology website. And I wait for the download to finish. Once the download of the compressed file is completed, I proceed to open it and extract the executable installer file to the desktop of my virtual PC. With the executable file now on the desktop, I double-click on it to begin the installation. By default, the software language is set to English. Next, I must choose a correct path where the at 32 ID will reside. Then I wait while the installation finishes. In the meantime, I review the installation manual of the at 32 ID, which outlines all the steps required to install and create a new project. It's worth noting that during installation, as demonstrated here in the manual, you must select a path where the created projects will be stored. This path is not necessarily fixed. As indicated, it can be changed to another location in that file, menu by selecting Switch Workspace. I return to the software installation and wait for it to finish. The time it takes will depend on your PC's specifications. Once the installation is complete, I close it and the AT32 ID is launched or executed. As mentioned earlier, I need to select a workspace path, wait a bit longer, and finally, the AT32 ID is ready to be used. I navigate to File and select Open Files from File System. Then click on the Directory button and navigate to the folder where the project was created with AT32 Workbench. Please refer to that video for more details. Once that folder is open, I press the button to select it. Then I click on the Finish button, and on the left, in the Project Explorer, I navigate to Project, and then to the SRC folder, where the C files generated by the workbench are located. For example, I open the main file, and everything displayed in the previous video is visible. I can do the same for the file related to interrupt functions or device configuration. For now, I'll close this project and proceed to follow the steps to create a project from scratch. I navigate to File and click on New Project. I click on the CC++ option, choose the C Project option, and click on the Next button. A window opens, similar to the one in the manual. I select the microcontroller family to be used, and the tool chain is set to ARM Cross GCC. The Finish button is disabled so I return to the manual to determine if anything is missing, and I realize that a name must be given to the project. I go back to the ID and type the name, Test1, and now the Finish button is enabled, so I click on it. I leave the following settings as they are in the manual, and then I wait for the project to generate. In the meantime, I return to the manual, and as indicated, I will compile the project when it's ready. Back in the project, which is now ready, I click on the button with the hammer symbol, and the project starts to build or compile. As the build progresses, I analyze the different C files in this generated project, and it can be seen that they perform various tasks that can serve as a reference for other projects. Finally, the project is compiled without errors and warnings. I've set aside the virtual PC since my intention was to demonstrate how to install the workbench and IDE from Artery Technology. Now I'm on my PC, with the workbench open, with a project exactly like the one shown in the previous video. The next step is to save that configuration in a location on my PC, then I proceed to generate the project, as explained in the previous video. Next, upon completion of the code generation, I proceed to open its location to view what the workbench has created. Now I navigate to the AT32 ID and proceed to open the project generated by the workbench. I select the project folder and proceed to open the project. In the Project Explorer, I navigate to the folder named SRC to view the C files, and in the configuration file, I can see the settings created for the two terminals or pins used as GPIO. I press the Compile button. And once the project build is completed, the console indicates that there are no errors or warnings. In the main file, I'm going to write some code with a potential exception, a division by zero, to see if the compiler detects it as an error or a warning. 
Note that when I compile it, it indicates that there are no errors or warnings. This is because I haven't saved the changes yet. So I save the changes and compile the project again, and this time, I receive a warning about dividing a variable by zero. That's all for now. I hope to conduct a test with the development board soon. Thank you for watching the video.